In this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to create a hyper casual dunk hit like game completely from scratch that will look something like this. I'm going to walk you through each and every step of the process in an easy to understand way. So even if you are a total beginner, you will have no problem following along whatsoever. If that sounds like your thing, make sure to stick around till the end. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Just Create. Just Create is one of my go-to publishers when I need high quality low poly assets for all kinds of different games from FPS to racing, you name it. So if you are struggling to find assets for your game, Just Create has got you covered. Check out the link down in the description to learn more. With that said, let's get started. Alright, so I've got a completely empty Unity project here with a bunch of asset packs. So I've got this camera shake that we are going to use for the camera shake, of course. And then we have the simple effects for the visual effects I'll show you later. And of course, we have got these sprites here that we are going to use throughout this tutorial. You can go ahead and download these from Flaticons. So just go ahead and search for basketball and I'm using this one, you can of course use whatever you like and of course you can search for the basketball net or the basketball hoop. And the next thing we want to do is make sure that we have universal render pipeline here. And if you don't already have it, so what you want to do is go to windows and then package manager. Make sure that you have selected all packages up here and then search for universal RP. And I've already installed it and if you haven't, you can just go ahead and install it right away. It will take a while bef before it imports all the, all the necessary files. And once it's installed, all you gotta do is right click, go to create and then you will have this rendering option, select universal render pipeline, forward render. And once you do that, you will see the, these two assets here. And this one is where you can handle quality settings, lighting, shadows, and yeah. But we're not gonna do that right now. And in order to use the URP, you also have to go to edit and then project settings. And inside of the quality tab, you can select any of these and then drag and drop the URP asset just like this. Yeah, that's pretty much all we need to do. And now we are using the universal render pipeline. All right, so now the first thing we want to do is set up the right resolution. So the game right now is in landscape mode. I will set it into portrait. And if you don't see these, you can of course create your own using this plus button here. Something like this looks good. And the first thing I want to do here is change the camera color. So let's change the background to a bit dark. I already have this, you can of course choose your own color, whatever you like. I'll keep this as is. Alright, and now our background is ready. We can start working on the game. So firstly, we need to create a ground for our ball. So let's go to sprites. So in order to create the ground, we need a square sprite. So we're gonna go ahead and create this one inside of Unity create and then find the sprites here and select the square all right let's call it ground whatever you want to call it and then drag and drop this inside of the hierarchy okay it looks a bit big so we'll scale it down but first let's place it down at the bottom and let's scale up the x-axis so it fills up nicely and I also want to change the camera size to a bit bigger, so maybe it, yeah, yeah, this looks good. And now let's reset the ground position, place it here, let's scale it up. All right, this looks good. And in order to make our ground solid, we also need to add a box collider 2D. So let's go to add component and box collider 2D. All right, so now our ground is pretty much ready. The next thing we want to do is import the ball. So let's drag and drop this basketball inside of the hierarchy. All right, yeah, well, that's a lot bigger than I thought. 
All right, so let's first rename this back to Bob. And now in order to scale it down, we can of course go ahead and change the scales from here. Instead, we're gonna select the ball sprite and here we will increase the pixel per unit. So let's try 300 and apply. See how it looks. Uh, yeah, it looks a bit better, but we need to make it more smaller. So I'm just gonna go put in 512. Yeah, this looks more like our size. So I'm gonna keep it at is. And now if we hit maximize on play, let's see how our ball looks inside the game. Yeah, it looks just about the right size. And the next thing we want to do is make our ball move. And in order to do that, we need to add a circle collider 2D and also a rigid body 2D in order to make the ball move. All right, we're not gonna change anything for now. Let's just try it to see how it looks. Okay, it falls down and yeah, it completely stops. So in order to make this bounce off the ground, we need to create a physics 2D material for this. So first I'm going to create a different folder for this. I'm going to call it mats. And inside of this, we're going to create a material for a ball. So let's scroll down to find the physics 2D material. Here it is. Let's select this and we will call it ball mat of course you can call it whatever you want but i'm gonna go with this and let's add it to our ball collider so the circle collider here takes a material let's drag and drop this inside of it and now we can change the material settings so for the friction i'm gonna keep it as is but for the bounciness i'm gonna make it 0.5 so it bounces off the ground and yeah here we go it looks much better now that our ball is ready, we can make a script to make the ball move. So let's select the ball and we're gonna create a new script. So let's go to add component and type in movement script. Create, head, create an add. All right. And inside of the assets, I'm gonna create another folder for these scripts i'm gonna call it scripts and drag and drop our newly created movement scripts inside of the scripts folder all right so that's it for the first part in the next one we are going to look at how to create a movement script for a ball make sure to stay tuned for that